Hey everyone! Welcome to this awesome tutorial where you'll learn how to implement push notifications in Flutter. In this tutorial, we'll cover everything you need to know about integrating push notifications into your Flutter apps. We'll walk you through the process step by step, ensuring you have a clear understanding of how it all works. By the end of this tutorial, you'll have the skills to implement push notifications like a pro, making your Flutter apps even more awesome. So, let's dive in and get started on this exciting push notification adventure together. To accomplish this task, two packages are required, Firebase Core and one Signal. Once you have added these packages to the pubspec.yaml file, you need to run pubgit in order to include them in your project. We plan to utilize the one signal service for our push notification system. Once we have signed up, we will navigate to the apps tab where we can add a new application. At this point, we need to provide a name for the app. Regarding the organization, the option no organization can be selected. Since we aim to implement push notifications specifically for Android mobile devices, we will choose Google Android. To proceed further, we require the server key and sender ID of our application. Hence, our next course of action involves creating a Firebase project and establishing a connection with our Flutter app. Once you've received a confirmation message for your Firebase project, navigate to the Project Overview section and select the Android icon to establish a connection with your Flutter app, specifically for the Android version. To begin, we require the package name of our Android application to register it in Firebase. Thus, we will copy and paste it from the Android manifest file. Next, we need to obtain the configuration file, googleservice.json, by downloading it and placing it in the app folder alongside the build.gradle file. Finally, in order to ensure successful utilization of Firebase SDK in our project, we must finish integrating it. This entails adding specific commands to certain files to fully implement the SDK. Let's proceed with the necessary steps to accomplish this goal together. Next, we will proceed with initializing Firebase Core in our project by rerunning the app. This step ensures that our project establishes a successful connection with Firebase. Once the connection is established, we can move on to the next step. We need to return to the project console to locate the server key and sender ID, which are essential for enabling push notifications. To find the server key and sender ID, follow these steps, open the project console for your Firebase project, navigate to the settings or configuration section, tap on the cloud messaging tab, in the cloud messaging tab, you will find the sender ID. However, to obtain the server key, you need to enable it first from the cloud messaging system. Once enabled, return to the project settings and navigate back to the cloud messaging tab to see your server key. To finish the task, simply copy and paste the sender ID and server key into your project configuration on one signal. Afterward, our preferred choice would be Flutter since we intend to utilize the one signal service within it. In the subsequent phase, OneSignal will provide us with an app ID, which we should store for future reference, as we will need it to send notifications to our application. Next, our plan entails creating a helper class that will enable us to incorporate OneSignal functionalities. This class will be called Notif Helper. Additionally, we will develop a static future void function named initNotif. Inside this function, we will include all the essential code required for the seamless implementation of the notification system. The function needs to be asynchronous because we need to wait for certain local functions of one signal to complete, which can be time-consuming. In this case, we need to ensure that we copy and paste the app ID provided by one signal. After that, we proceed to the next step where we wait for the user to grant permission for sending notifications to their phone. Finally, the last action involves initializing and invoking the one signal function from the previously constructed helper class. Proceed by rerunning the application to verify whether the connection has been established successfully. To ensure functionality, you can now receive notifications on your app. Simply return to the OneSignal web page and click on the Check Subscribed Users button to verify if any devices are connected to it. Once you receive the success message, you can begin sending notifications to your Flutter app. Within the messaging section designated for sending notifications, there is an array of options available for customizing your notifications. 
However, our current objective is to send basic notifications to the application in order to assess its functionality. Once you finish filling out the notification details, simply select the Review and Send button to transmit the notification to the user's phone. After a few seconds, you will receive the notification. As you can see, this is the notification we composed a few moments ago, and it is now being successfully displayed on an actual phone. Furthermore, within the One Signal panel, you have the ability to access additional information regarding notifications, including details about the recipients who received the notifications and those who may have missed them. In addition, you can also find supplementary data such as the click-through rate and other relevant metrics. In conclusion, I sincerely hope that this tutorial has proven to be not only helpful but also truly beneficial to you. If you found value in this type of content, I encourage you to subscribe to my channel so that you can stay updated with future videos similar to this one. Furthermore, if you have any further inquiries or uncertainties regarding the tutorial, I wholeheartedly invite you to share your thoughts by leaving a comment below. Until the release of our next tutorial, I bid you farewell.